we are going to discuss what is shadow analytics and how to manage it in a positive manner. Everyone knows what is shadow IT. Of course, this session is intended for CIOs. If you are not a CIO, this session has limited value for you. Shadow IT has been a comparatively recent phenomenon, but shadow analytics has been there for years. So what exactly do I mean by shadow analytics? It means data which is being captured, cleaned up, processed, summarized, and reports getting generated outside the IT systems. Everyone does it. Many times we just leave it alone. We don't even consider it as a problem. Some CIOs do consider it as a problem and try to create systems in such a way that users do not need to generate reports on their own. The system should be able to give you everything. Unfortunately, most such efforts have failed. Irrespective of how much money and time you have spent on creating the most perfect IT systems, people will still copy-paste data and struggle with it. So rather than looking at it as a problem, let's look at it as a re reality which cannot be avoided and then see how it can be enhanced. Now you may have self-service BI, but that is not shadow analytics. Typically, self-service BI, the data comes from IT. The cubes are created by IT. The data warehouse is created by IT. And only the reporting layer is given to end users to customize. That's a good thing. But even that does not eliminate shadow analytics because people will copy-paste data from self-service BI and still create their own reports. So who is involved? Unfortunately, shadow analytics starts with top management. If you go to any CFO, any CEO and look at the top 10 reports they look at on a daily basis, you'll be surprised to know all those are handcrafted reports. Even in the largest of companies, financial accounts are closed manually using some weird kind of concoction of ERPs and SAP. Uh, ERP data along with Excel and lots of manual work. That involves direct reports and people lower down as well. And this problem is not just associated with internal. It's also external parties like customers, suppliers, retailers, dealers. In the highly regulated industries, the regulator themselves may be demanding or delivering data in neither standard nor safe formats, complicating the problems. Unfortunately, everyone except IT seems to be involved. In some cases, even IT own users are resorting to shadow analytics because even if you are a database person, for every small little thing, you are not going to write a program or a stored procedure. It's so much easier to finish it off in Excel. So what exactly happens? It's a very scary thing. You look at any aspect of this process, everything is error prone. The data very often is outdated, which is very, very dangerous because someone captured the data from somewhere. They just use the same data every now and then. Nobody remembers to update it. Even the process is repetitive, manual and ad hoc. Because it is so, it is variable and it is person dependent. I am sure you have seen every department as a couple of people. If they are absent, the month end or year end closing suffers tremendously. Nothing is documented. It's a miracle that things are working. In many cases, actions may be wrong or delayed or missed, but there is no audit. And because of that, there is no learning and no improvement. It's a disaster. It's such a big disaster that nobody even looks at it seriously, leave alone trying to improve it. The disadvantages are obvious. I'm not going to explain each one of them. Probably all of us know it at the back of our mind, but hasn't taken any action before. So let's look at what can be done. Before we go there, just a simple layman-like definition of analytics, but it's important to have this perspective. We need data and obviously most of the data comes from historical events or transactions or whatever you call it. We learn from it and then try to do some action which is hopefully going to improve the future in our favor. It's a very simple definition. What is missing there is the gap in between and that's a gap which I call business ignorance. Why? Because data has a lot of things which are potentially useful. The question is, are we looking at every possible useful thing that data has to offer? Unfortunately, 
The answer is no. For any kind of data, we generate finite number of reports, 5, 7, 10, whatever the number is, it stops at some number. Why did we report 5 things or 7 things? Because someone asked for those 7 reports. Because someone did not ask for the 8th or 9th report, equally useful information is getting lost, which is like loss of business opportunity. So that's where the real benefit of analytics should come from. Everyone should have the time and the ability to learn every possible useful thing. That would make it business intelligence. So now how do we handle this? We start not by suppressing it, but by finding out the disadvantages, plugging the gaps, and then empowering the users to find actually useful pieces of information like we discussed earlier. Now we start with, of course, data and then move up the chain in the process. When it comes to data sources, first step is to enlist where people are getting data from. I know it is difficult to actually look at all users and all pieces of data they are looking at, but at least start with few users, important reports, something like that, shortlist top N reports, and then find out. Typically, you'll be surprised to see a lot of non-updated files lot of ambiguous sources and so on. So that's the listing part. Then we have to think of which is the substitute which is valid updated data and then create a data catalog where users can authoritatively pick up the data in a refreshed manner without extra effort. That would be called a data catalog. Now it's not just a big word, it can start very simple. The idea is please don't send data by email because that's a disaster. What we really need is some shared folder. It can be a simple local shared folder, server-based folder, cloud-based folder, where the data creation and refresh is handled by someone authoritative. It could be IT or a power user. And then the read-only access is provided to end users. Very often, system applications are also used as data sources by users. Unfortunately, most reports are exported to Excel like they were printouts. That's a bad idea. If you have control over it, try to export it as a table or a pivot table. SAP, which is one of the most common data sources, has an option of exporting data as tabular or pivot table. But most users do not know it. Just educate them and that itself eliminates the need for a lot of manual work. Very often end users resort to gathering ad hoc data without talking to IT in any way. They generate random Word or Excel templates, send it to each other or even externally and gather data in the worst possible way. It's all error prone, haphazard and time consuming. If you have Office 365, you can use Forms apps or you can use Google Survey or SurveyMonkey. If you have SharePoint, SharePoint has a good survey option. If you are trying to capture tabular data rather than a survey, Survey basically means one person fills one questionnaire. Whereas tabular data means one person or entity gives you rows and columns of data like an Excel sheet. SharePoint list is a great equivalent for that kind of data capture which is very secure and extremely useful. So start using these kind of data capture techniques. Another dangerous stuff is VLOOKUP. Very often transactional data has codes and people need to convert those codes into descriptions and that is done by using VLOOKUP. It's a very commonly used function. Unfortunately, it increases the file size, slows down the performance and many people do not know the exact syntax and the pitfalls of that syntax. So very often they get results which are absolutely wrong and nobody notices them. So it's a very dangerous function. To eliminate that, we use Power Pivot. Power Pivot has been there since Excel 2010. All that you have to do there is get the data transactional as well as the master and just do a simple drag drop to create a relationship which eliminates the need for VLOOKUP, improves performance and gives you best of both worlds. Users just don't know about it. That's why they are not using it. Just teach it to them. Because users are used to this kind of shadow analytics for decades, managing this change is important. We should not try to eliminate or enforce some strict practices to prevent it from happening. 
we should show new and useful stuff to people and prove that their methods are leading to inefficiency and wastage of time at individual level. Once people see a new and better thing, there is no way they will go back to an inefficient method. So once they see the benefit, they will go for it. And we can incentivize it further using gamification. Now here are some examples of how things can be improved. Here is a traditional pie chart. We use it to understand and compare different things to each other. Now if I ask you, B is bigger or C is bigger, we'll have to think a little. Very often we use 3D pie chart where it is even more difficult to understand proportions and compare them to each other. Now we have a new type of chart called tree map. The data is exactly the same but now without much effort we can clearly understand that C is bigger than B and E is bigger than D. And this is the raw data for all the three charts. Bottom line. Tell people that tree map is available and here is the benefit. People will start using it. Tree map has been there for quite some time, but nobody has understood the importance of it and we continue to use pie charts. Here is another common chart we use. This is a stacked column chart. Very traditional, very commonly used. Now here is a variation of it. It's called a ribbon chart. It is still a stacked bar chart. And individual months are shown as bar chart. The difference is for each month it tries to sort the data in descending order. So in the first month the red one which is infrastructure was contributing the highest and the orange one was contributing the lowest. Now for every month it tries to sort it and color code it. So here you can see that infrastructure has continuously been on the top whereas the green one or the BU one was very low in Jan and then it moved up and then it came down and so on and so forth. So apart from showing proportions of individual item within a month, it is also showing you its progression or trend across months. It just requires one extra click to draw a ribbon chart compared to stack column chart. So with very little effort, we are actually getting additional useful information. Now if you show this to people who are used to looking at a stack column chart, it may require them a little bit of understanding, but they will clearly see the benefit and start using it. Here is another visualization. The top one is the same chart which we saw earlier. At the bottom, we have a special thing called text descriptor. Whatever is being shown in the chart on top, it is describing it in simple language. Now, right now, nothing is selected, so it is trying to describe the whole chart and there is a scroll bar. That's not very useful. But see what happens when I click on a particular component of the chart. It is actually describing it and it's showing you the value for that particular month and for that particular business area. Now, of course, this could have been seen in a tooltip, but here it is very clearly shown as text. This works across all components of the chart. It also works with multi-select where it is showing you both values for June and for December for different BUs. So here are some simple examples of how existing stuff can be enhanced. There are a lot of modern visualizations and I am just showing you visualizations available along with Power BI. There are lots and lots of visualizations and more are getting added every week. This is just Power BI, mind you. If you take additional kinds of BI tools, then there is a very long list. It's a good thing and a bad thing because there are too many options. And nobody tries to invest time, energy and money in educating users or even learning which type of visualization is most suited for which type of data. Sometimes the creators of the charts may know about it, but the consumers or people who are going to interpret the chart may not know that information, which may lead to misinterpretation also in some cases. So it's not just about availability of lots of visualization, there is a method to the madness. What we need to do is standardized effective usage. Once we have a report or a dashboard, how to disseminate it is also inefficient. Most commonly, the outdated way of doing it is to send it by mail and that should be avoided at all costs because not only does it consume space and bandwidth, 
it is inefficient because every month or every periodic interval we are going to send more and more copies and confuse each other. Ideally, we should post the report or the file on cloud and send the link once and for all. Next month or next period onwards, the data changes but the link does not change. And of course, the data can be refreshed either manually or automatically. This is the practical implementation of single version of truth, which we still have not fully achieved in spite of BI as a concept being there for two decades. How to refresh a report? That's important. Today, everything is manual. People copy-paste data, change the ranges, refresh pivot table charts and various kinds of stuff and then again send the report. It's very bad, time consuming and error prone. Now, if you are using Excel, there is something called Data Gateway which works with Power BI which allows you to even take a simple CSV file lying on a user level desktop and have a periodic predefined frequency of refresh as the lowest possible denominator. No programming is involved, no data warehousing is involved. On the other hand of the spectrum, there is very sophisticated data, same data gateway allows you sophisticated refresh from on-premise data sources and servers which can reflect onto the Power BI portal. So start using report refresh rather than doing it manually. One of the important things which we typically achieve using data warehousing is row level security. So if there is a global report, the top boss can see it across regions. And if a regional manager logs in, he or she can see only their own data. Now to do that, we require a proper data warehouse or a cube with proper level of security defined at every level. Now, using Power BI, it is very easy. Today, the lowest common denominator is people manually filter the report, copy paste the data and mail it to each other, which is the worst way of doing it. But even today, it is done in a rampant manner. With Power BI, even with a simple CSV file or a text file, we can have row level security. That too, defined by user without creating a data warehouse or a queue. It's an amazing capability. Hardly anybody, even those who use Power BI, don't know about it. But once you know it, it's very easy to implement and even end users will be able to understand it. How do we promote people to use all these new things? One method is to gamify and make it exciting, create some challenge. So one of them is a visual contest. As I said, there are a lot of visuals. Let people build reports. Let them experiment with visuals and the one which gives you best value is given some price. Everyone generates reports, everyone knows what to interpret. But if I come out with some new useful insight, I should be incentivized for that. Like that, you can have different kind of contests going on. Bottom line is if someone is generating some useful information, which does derive additional business value, a small proportion of that should be given as a price. That creates a healthy competition and improves utilization. Now today, whatever your work is and whatever technology you use, there is a lot of context switching. What do I mean by that? Whatever my work is, the actual components of what I work on are scattered across places. It doesn't matter which vendor you use, but this always happens. So now using Teams app, we can actually have all the things I need for getting one kind of work done in one place. And that place is the Teams app. What does it allow you to do? For a given kind of work or a project or an initiative, it allows you to assemble your team. That means we are bringing people in one place. And in addition, it allows you to bring all the technology in one place. So the communication, chat, files related to the project, data related to the project, websites, Power BI reports, Excel files, everything related to the project becomes available in one place. So that eliminates the need for remembering what is stored where. We know this is the objective, this is the project, everything related to the project is in that particular Teams app. This is a new way of just consolidating your work and simplifying life. Of course, Teams doesn't just integrate with Power BI and Excel, it integrates with 130 plus third party apps and also allows you to create your own integration with it, with your line of business systems. Now it's time for some demos. So let's see some data cleanup with Flash Fill.
this is a method of almost magical data cleanup. In this case, in column B, I have data which actually should be in three different columns. Most people would use either some manual method or some formula or most probably text to columns where we will specify space as the delimiter. Unfortunately, what is going to happen is the first row will get split properly, but second row has additional space. So that will not work as expected. Now everyone knows this is going to happen and everyone is going to waste their life manually trying to repair that data for hundreds of rows. Now that is inefficient. It is so inefficient that we have got used to it and nobody cares. But Microsoft does. So here is the new method of doing it. You just type what you want. Of course, nothing happened right now. Give one more example. Just start typing what you want. And then Excel does the pattern matching. If what it, does, if what it is doing is right, you just press enter. And that's so simple. I will just show it for one more column. And what do I want next? 84. So just type 8. It works. There is another method of doing it. I can give just one example and then click on flash fill which forces Excel to use that example and do the job. In most cases both the methods work. In some cases it may not. For example, in this case I want whatever is in the brackets. But if you notice sometimes there is a bracket colon hyphen so there is no fixed pattern. So now if I say FT and then try to press flash fill or if I type MGMT, something did not work out. In this case, I may have to give three examples. So now if I put IT, maybe it will work. Even then it is not working. Let me start with HR, it's not working. So at this stage you may decide that this is not going to work. But don't worry. In this case, what do you do? Give one example, force it. Of course, it will make a mistake because it is thinking that I should take the uppercase characters. So go to the first mistake and correct it. It is smart enough to understand its mistake, reapply the pattern matching and do the job. The next demo is something called Insights. Again, a brilliant feature in Excel. Here is the raw data. I have intentionally kept it very simple. Now this raw data I use as a user and create some reports. Which reports will I create? Most probably the reports which my boss is asking for. Nothing wrong with that, but does it mean I have used all the columns, all the data points and analyzed it from all points of view? 100% the answer is no. Now who is going to do that? Even if you have the capability and knowledge, you don't have unlimited amount of time to try all permutation combinations of all rows and columns. So, Microsoft added a new tool called Insights. All that you have to do is click on it. The data temporarily goes to machine learning system of Microsoft. Nothing is retained on the server, it's deleted immediately after this. And it actually analyzes the data and finds out what is the best way in which you can visualize and understand the data. In this case, it has given me four different things. It has also chosen the right kind of chart for me. Now notice here, it has grouped the data by the sales manager. How has it done it? Because it has done a pivot table inside it. So if I say insert chart, what is going to happen? It has also added a pivot table. So even if the users did not know what is a pivot table, they can learn from it. That's one. Second, there are many more results, total 14. So let me see some other results. Most probably, no user is going to create this chart. What is it doing? It is doing, because there are two numeric fields, sales, amount and discount, it has put both as a scatter chart, it has drawn a trend, and it is trying to check how much is the correlation between this. Now what is it saying? Sales and discount are correlated. Very good. We know that because obviously discount is going to be proportional to the sales value. But you will also notice that apart from this line and most points being here, there are two points which are very far away. So those are the two points where for some reason amount of discount is mismatched to the general trend. And you may want to go and investigate who was responsible for that discount. Was it a valid thing? Was it a mistake? Was it some pilferage or some mischief done by someone? This is how machine learning is helping us go beyond 
and this is exactly the implementation of what I said earlier. Learn every possible useful thing from the data so that we can improve the future. Next demo is about explain the increase or decrease. Now this one I'm going to show using Power BI Desktop. I'll explain what that means. It's Power BI version available as an independent thing. So I have a simple month and value chart. Now as you can see, it is fluctuating. Somewhere there is an increase, somewhere there is a decrease. Now obvious question is, why did this amount decrease? Now notice, only two fields are being used, month and value. But along with that, I have so many other pieces of data in the same model. Various things which are not shown on the plot may have contributed to the increase and decrease of that amount. Now, I am not going to try all permutation combinations. All I do is go to this and say explain the decrease. If I had gone to a point which was increasing, I would have said explain the increase. And then same kind of machine learning analytics will happen. It will go and find out the correlations. So now it's saying month and VP, there is a correlation. But we know month and vice president is not very practical. Remember this machine learning doesn't understand what is a VP and what is a month. It just understands text, number and dates. So it may show you something which does not make business sense, in which case we simply ignore it. But now this makes sense, month and IT sub area. So it is showing me that this was the value for September. This was for October. You can see the amount of increase here. And why is that increase? Because some things increase, some things decrease. There are more insights by different parameters which statistically are significant. Now, which one is useful is up to you to decide. Now, assume that you like this version of it and you want to use it for future. So, you just say plus, in which case this becomes a part of your regular reporting. So, we are discovering on one hand, machine learning is helping us and then whatever discovery is useful, we are integrating it into day-to-day -day work, creating best practices and standard operating procedures as we go along. So this is a brilliant feature. The last thing I want to show you is called QA. With so many fields and so many visualizations, it is still confusing to choose the right thing. Now we know what we want to show, but we may not know how to show it. So here is a new amazing way of creating reports. This is a blank report. You just double click and it says, okay, don't bother, you just ask a question. All right. So let me ask a question. I'm just typing amount. Now it has understood that I have many tables and there is one field called amount. This is just showing me the total amount. I don't just want to look at it. I want to break down that amount by country or by region or by cost element. So let's say by C. I just type C. Notice what it is doing. It has gone and understood that there are two fields. One is cost element and cost element name. So I'm going to use the cost element name. And notice it has actually given me a visualization of this. Okay, I like it. I keep it. Now let's ask another question. By, let's say, country. Now it has already done this. And it has already drawn a bubble chart. And the size of the bubble indicates which country. Like this, I can start building my report. And then, of course, everything is cross-filtered. So if I want to see software, this is filtering out on software or software maintenance and outsourcing and so on and so forth. That is how it's a completely new way of developing and building reports from scratch in an intuitive manner. Now, just to explain what happened here. Power BI is built into Excel. We have get and transform in the data menu, power pivot as a tab and power view to create dashboards. This is already with you if you are using Office 16. If you are using Office 13 or 10, you will have to install a couple of add-ins on top of it. Microsoft decided to create a combined version of importing and cleanup, data modeling and dashboarding into a separate tool and that is called Power BI Desktop. That doesn't require Excel. Dashboards created using Power BI Desktop can be published on the Power BI portal. So this is the one which requires payment. This is the one which is free. 
initially you can start using the free one create your dashboards in excel and eventually when you graduate to using power bi which is obviously much more sophisticated and has lot more features and it is growing very fast you can import it from excel without any loss of effort so what next find out some top n scenarios which are critical to business decisions review the data sources clean up the data provide it as a service in an authentic and refreshable manner create etl using power bi templates where power bi templates have the data source the clean up required and the base visualization users can use the template login as themselves and then customize the visualization one bottleneck which always comes in the way is how to convince the senior because they are used to some seeing something maybe they are the ones who have demanded that particular report or format so they are emotionally attached to it now for them to understand the importance of this first continue showing existing reports but then take the same data create new reports visualization dashboards whatever which is relevant and show it to them demonstrate it to them let them play with it and when they find something new in the new way of analyzing data which they would otherwise have missed in the existing reports they will start getting convinced that the new thing is the way to go that is called self analytics in fact very often we have static reports pasted in powerpoint and boss comes and asks show me this show me that and very often the data is static so we say sorry we will get back to you now with all this being interactive this eliminates those stupid review meetings where we spend lot of time and typical answers is i will get back to you which delays the decision in fact what should be done is everyone should analyze the data at their own level and then have a meeting to discuss actionable items to improve business that's called digital transformation so that's all we have time for thank you look at my blog i write lot of articles there 1000 plus articles already there called efficiency365 dot com and follow me on twitter